English learners, welcome back to another great lesson here at English Pod. My name is Marco. And my name is Catherine. So, Marco, today we've got a little bit of an unusual lesson because we're talking about hypothetical situations. Right. We're talking about a unreal situation or something that may happen or may not happen. Okay. So, you're going to hear all about this in today's dialogue. We're going to hear it a couple of times when we come back. We'll be breaking it down for you so you know all about these great phrases and how to talk about not real situations with your friends. Okay, next question. If Eric asked you out on a date, what would you say? Duh, I would say yes. Eric is the most popular kid in school. Okay, my turn. What would you do if you won the lottery? Let's see. If I won the lottery, I would buy two tickets for a trip around the world. If you buy me a ticket, I'll go with you for sure. <laughs> My dad would freak out if I even mention a trip like that. All right, this is a good one. What would your mom say if you told her that you're going to get married? If I told her that, she would faint and have me committed. All right, so I think that was clear and, well, a very common situation. Two teenage girls talking to each other about, you know, boys and what would you do and da da da. Guys do this too, so don't just put this on the girls, okay? <laughs> I don't think we do it like this, though. No, but it's actually a very popular game in the car to play the what if game. <laughs> the what if game,、yeah. exactly. And that's exactly the topic that we want to talk about today is the structure what if, which is actually called a conditional. All right, it's a conditional because. The result, the,、uh, the thing that happens, depends on something else. Exactly. So let's,、uh, let's actually take a look at the words in today's language takeaway before we talk about all this grammar stuff. Language takeaway. Okay, so we'll start out with some basic words.、Um, well, you know, they were talking about guys, and she said, if Eric asked you out. Uh huh. <laughs> right? So to ask somebody out. Okay, so this might be a little bit strange because you think, okay, to ask is to ask a question. But to ask out, it's a fixed phrase. It's、mm -hmm. something you say. These two words go together, right?、Mm -hmm. So I want to ask someone out, it means I want to invite someone on a date. On a romantic date, usually. So yeah, I want to ask him out to dinner, or he asked me out to the movies.、Mm -hmm. Now, if I didn't want to ask somebody out on a romantic date, what, would, what verb would you use? I'd say you could invite someone out.、Uh, but then again, it's always a little bit,、uh, well, you can say invite for someone if you're going to ask them on a date too. So、yeah. I'd say to ask out is always romantic.、Mm -hmm. And to invite can be romantic or just friends. Okay. So to ask somebody out. Now,、uh, they were talking about other situations. Maybe they would go on a trip or something. And she said, my dad would freak out. <gasps> Well, this is a great phrase, and this is something that I used a lot when I was a teenager. The word freak out? Freak out. So, the verb to freak out means to be really angry or upset, or, you know, it could be a good thing or a bad thing.、Mm -hmm. But usually, when we're talking about our parents, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So, they get angry, they start yelling at you. Yeah, so freak out, freak out means like overreact. All right. And、uh, the last word that we have on language takeaway today is、uh, committed. Well, let's look at the whole phrase. He says, She would have me committed. So, this is actually being done to someone.、Mm -hmm. Now, we did look at this word before, but basically for, for marriage, right? To, to commit to somebody, to promise. Yeah, but to have someone committed、mm -hmm. means that you're going to send them away to maybe a mental institution. Exactly. So, this means they have psychological problems and someone else sends them. To the hospital because they can't send themselves. Exactly. So it's always used to have someone committed, right? Right, because it's, it's being done to them. They don't want it to happen, it's、mm -hmm. involuntary. Okay, so she had him committed. My mom's gonna have me committed if I keep working 20 hours a day. <laughs> exactly. So that's the way you use it. And so now you have another way of using this verb. But now I think we should listen to this dialogue again. We're gonna slow it down a little bit. And then we'll come back and look at this grammar focus that we wanna talk about. Okay, next question. If Eric asked you out on a date, what would you say? Duh. I would say yes. Eric is the most popular kid in school. 
Okay, my turn. What would you do if you won the lottery? Let's see. If I won the lottery, I would buy two tickets for a trip around the world. If you buy me a ticket, I will go with you for sure. <laughs> My dad would freak out if I even mention a trip like that. All right, this is a good one. What would your mom say if you told her you were going to get married? If I told her that, she would faint and have me committed. All right, so uh, we understood all the vocab now. Now let's take a look at these unreal situations and what we were saying, the what if game. Right, so I think it's important to push these into two different categories, right? We have mm -hmm. one kind where it's very unrealistic. It's probably not going to happen, mm -hmm. that kind of situation. And the other one is a situation that could very well happen, something that's probably very common. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is very unrealistic okay. situations, things that probably won't happen. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, an example that we found in the dialogue. The most common one, and I think everybody gets asked this question, is if you won the lottery, what would you do? Okay, if you won the lottery. So this is a situation that's very uncommon, right? right. Not many people win the lottery. Mm -hmm. So we have to say, if you won the lottery. So we use this, this, this verb in the past tense. Mm -hmm. If you won the lottery, if this happened, what would you do? Right. All so, right. Catherine, if you won the lottery, what would you do? If I won the lottery, I would buy a boat and sail around the world wow. with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, another example, again, using the same structure, right? The verb in the simple past tense, we would say, if you were stuck on an island with one other person, who would that be? All right. So, if you were mm -hmm. stuck on a desert island, with one person, who would that person be? So, Marco, I'm going to ask you, who would it be? Uh, I think it would be an engineer or a scientist that could probably get me off the island. What about your girlfriend? No, well, you know, that's the point. If I can get to her quicker. Oh, okay. Uh, I would say maybe kind of romantic, but kind of not. <laughs> so that's the first situation. We've got these situations like being stuck on an island, winning the lottery. These are very unlikely. But what about the other kind? Uh, but before we move on to that, uh, you notice that we used the verb was. We didn't say if I was on an island. I said if I were, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you were. Mm -hmm. So this is the way that you use it in these conditionals. If I were you or if you were president of the United States. Yeah, this is a rule. So this is a grammar rule. We're not going to describe why it happens because it's very, very complicated and you can look it up on our site, but we're going to describe how to use it. That's the most important. Mm -hmm. So we can say, for example, Marco, if I were you, I would dye my hair red. <laughs> why? I don't know. I think it would look cool. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. So if I were you, I would. Or uh -huh. if you were me, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we always use it like this, right? If you're going to use this conditional, always use were for the subject, never was. Right. So you can tell this is very, very big grammar issue. A lot of English speakers make this mistake. Yes, very mm -hmm. many. So, but now you know that you shouldn't make this mistake and you can speak properly. All right. So now that we've seen these uh, semi unreal situations, let's move on to something that's a little bit more probable that it may happen. Right, so we've got these, uh, these situations that are common or likely. Um, for example, in this lesson we hear, I will go with you for sure. So this is, if you buy me a ticket to travel, of course I will go with you. Mm -hmm. So if you buy, this is in the present tense, mm -hmm. if you buy, then I will. Right. Right. So now you notice the difference. The verb is in the present, and then we use, instead of would, we use will. So again, I can say... If it rains tomorrow, I will stay home and watch TV all day. Okay, so think about this. We Before we talked about going to de desert islands, now we're talking about rain and the weather. They're very, very different. The mm -hmm. rain is, is, you know, is very common. So we can say, if it rains tomorrow, I will need an umbrella. Mm -hmm. What about this? If we have lunch tomorrow, what will we eat? So, okay, so... We have lunch pretty much every day, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, again, it's a, it's a situation that is very probable. So, if uh, we have lunch tomorrow, uh, we will probably eat 
I don't know, pasta, I think. I'm yeah. feeling like pasta tomorrow. Pasta, yeah. some noodles. Yeah. All right, so Marco, let's take another listen to some of these phrases and try and figure out while you're listening which kind of conditional it is, first or the second. Example one. If it's sunny today, we will go to the park. Example two. I would get a divorce if I were you. Example three. Mary will be very sad if Joe leaves. Example four. We wouldn't be so late if Nick drove faster. Very good. So we heard different examples. And the first conditional is the one that we mentioned is very probable. And the second conditional is the one that's not so probable. So they're very easy to distinguish. You don't really need to know the names. Just know how to use them, right? Exactly. And so just remember, if you were me, what would you do? We've got these kind of pairs, these words that go together. Mm -hmm. And the other one is more common. It's if, we, if it rains tomorrow, I will bring an umbrella. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So why don't we listen to this uh, dialogue for the last time just to kind of reinforce everything and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Okay, next question. If Eric asked you out on a date, what would you say? Duh, I would say yes. Eric is the most popular kid in school. Okay, my turn. What would you do if you won the lottery? Let's see. If I won the lottery, I would buy two tickets for a trip around the world. If you buy me a ticket, I'll go with you for sure. <laughs> My dad would freak out if I even mention a trip like that. All right, this is a good one. What would your mom say if you told her that you're going to get married? If I told her that, she would faint and have me committed. So Marco, if we talk any more about grammar, someone's going to have to have me committed. <laughs> it is a little bit difficult to talk about grammar, especially on a podcast, because it's such a difficult topic and it's also kind of heavy, right? It is, but I'll tell you this. These are very, very common phrases. People use these all the time. We talk, we talk in hypotheticals very often. Yeah. So um, if you're asking for advice, for example, or if you're just playing a game in the car, uh, you're going to encounter these and it's very important to be able to know how to use them. Mm-hmm. So, and this is what we want to see now. Please come to our website at EnglishPod.com and you have a million questions. You have a million hypotheticals that you can leave on our website. So let us know. Ask us the craziest, funniest, weirdest questions that you can, right? Exactly. And if you have questions about the stuff that we've been talking about, you're not really clear on some things, just ask us because we're happy to answer your questions and give more examples on the website. All right. So we'll see you guys there. And uh, until next time. Bye, Bye. everyone. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. To be in the place of someone. Be in your shoes. To lose one's nerve, become suddenly anxious. Freak out. An instance of spending the night as a guest at another's home. Sleepover. To request a date. Ask someone out. Suppositional. Uncertain. Hypothetical. Put in a mental hospital. Commit. Rumor or talk of a personal, sensational, or intimate nature. Gossip. To join in marriage. Get married. To have dreamlike musings or fantasies while awake. Daydream. A romantic meeting. Date. Let's try that faster. Suppositional. Uncertain. Hypothetical. 
to join in marriage. Get married. Rumor or talk of a personal, sensational, or intimate nature. Gossip. To have dreamlike musings or fantasies while awake. Daydream. To be in the place of someone. Be in your shoes. Put in a mental hospital. Commit. A romantic meeting. Date. An instance of spending the night as a guest at another's home. Sleepover. To request a date. Ask someone out. To lose one's nerve, become suddenly anxious. Freak out. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Ask someone out. When asking someone out, choose your moment carefully and practice what you might say in advance so that you don't appear tongue-tied. Ask someone out. I heard you asked your new neighbor out on a date. Ask someone out. I really want to ask Jeff out, but what if he says no? Freak out. Oh my gosh, I'm going to meet Justin Timberlake. I'm totally freaking out. Freak out. Why did you freak out when I told you I'd be late for dinner? Freak out. Don't freak out. We can solve this problem in five minutes. Commit. The judge had him committed to a mental institution. Commit. If you get committed to an asylum, can you eventually get out? Commit. He was committed to 50 hours of community service for his crimes. If I won a million dollars, I would buy you a diamond ring. We wouldn't be so late if Nick drove faster. I would get a divorce if I were you. If it's sunny today, we will go to the park. If you study hard, you will pass the test. Mary will be very sad if Joe leaves.
Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco, and my name is Catherine. And today we've got a very, very useful lesson for all of you out there. That's right. We're bringing you part two of the What If series, which is a small series. Small, and it is kind of grammar focused, but it's very, very important because you often want to talk about things that don't happen. We're calling these hypotheticals or、mm-hmm. uh, conditional statements. Right. So there are many different types of hypotheticals or conditional statements. So today we're going to be looking at the third conditional, which is、uh, probably the hardest one because it uses a little bit of a complex grammar structure. It's complex, and we're actually talking about things that did not happen and that will not happen. Right. It's、so、impossible to change. It's impossible to change these because there are things that. Would have happened in the past, but didn't. <laughs> wow, that sounds confusing.、Uh, why don't we listen to the dialogue for the first time, and then we'll be back to look at some phrases first. This is the good life. We have it good, don't you think? Yeah, of course. Although, don't you ever wonder what could have been? What do you mean? Well, sometimes I think of how things could have turned out if I had done things a little differently. For example, like for example, if I hadn't studied architecture, I would have become an artist like I wanted to. I see. Yeah, now that I think of it, I wouldn't have gotten married if I hadn't moved to this town and met Sally. You see, everything happens for a reason. We wouldn't even have met if I hadn't been in that car accident ten years ago. Well, I have no regrets. I'll drink to that. All right, so、uh, two guys, you know, talking about life. These, I, I imagine, these guys as being, you know, middle to middle age or a little bit older, sitting on a porch, drinking a beer, talking about what could have been. Yeah, exactly. They're kind of、uh, thinking about the past and, and the, the decisions they have made. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so、uh, before we start in the grammar,、uh, why don't we take a look at a couple of different phrases on fluency builder? Fluency builder. Well, Marco, this first phrase is a phrase you'll hear very often in English.、Uh, it's a phrase that even has philosophical roots. Something we talked a lot about when we were studying Socrates back in,、uh, in school. But、uh, this is the good life. The good life. We have the good life, or、right. I have a good life. I have a good life is a very common phrase, but here the good life is an idiom.、Mm-hmm. So I'm living the good life、It、means you know I have no complaints about my life. Right. So pretty much you have all your necessities covered. And maybe you have a good, a nice family, and you have a good job, and you're just happy. So this is the good life.、Mm-hmm. Very good. So you have the good life. Now moving on to another phrase that's kind of also、uh, philosophical. You know. Uh, it says everything happens for a reason. All right. So this phrase is well. It's also pretty common. People say this when bad things happen, but they、right. also say this when good things happen. Yeah. So basically, you're just saying that it's destiny. If this bad thing happened to you, there is a reason for it. Maybe you don't see it now. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe later you'll see why. This often happens when people lose their jobs.、Uh, you say, "Well, you know, everything happens for a reason. Maybe losing this job will allow you to find a better job,、mm-hmm. or maybe go back to school and study, or maybe meet the man or woman of your dreams." <laughs> right. So everything happens for a reason. Very good. And then the guy agrees and says, "Well, I'll drink to that." Okay. So this is a way for people speaking English to say, "Listen." I agree with you. I like that idea, <laughs> and I will cheers. Cheers, right? Right. So this means we're going to touch our glasses or touch our beer bottles, and we're going to, you know, think about how this is a it's a nice thought.、Mm-hmm. You know, everything happens for a reason is positive. It's a way to say, listen, good things can happen from this. Right. So he's saying, yes, I agree. Cheers. I'll, I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. All right. Well, pretty interesting phrases.、Um, you know, they're very common. I guess like colloquial, right?、Mm-hmm. So、uh, you can use them in everyday conversation with a friend. You can, and you know, oftentimes we say,、um, ba- for example, something really positive, like I'm really glad I have such great friends, and then everyone says, "Oh, I'll drink to that," right?、Mm-hmm. And so this is something you'll hear when you're out with friends or with family, and、uh, they may sound funny at first. But you will recognize them when you're speaking to people who speak English. All right. So, right. So, let's listen to our dialogue again, and then we'll come back and explain the grammar. This is the good life. 
We have it good, don't you think? Yeah, of course. Although, don't you ever wonder what could have been? What do you mean? Well, sometimes I think of how things could have turned out if I had done things a little differently. For example? Like, for example, if I hadn't studied architecture, I would have become an artist like I wanted to. I see. Yeah, now that I think of it, I wouldn't have gotten married if I hadn't moved to this town and met Sally. You see, everything happens for a reason. We wouldn't even have met if I hadn't been in that car accident ten years ago. Well, I have no regrets. I'll drink to that. Beep, beep, beep. All right, so now it's time for Grammar Breakdown. Grammar Breakdown. So in Grammar Breakdown, we're going to look at the two main parts of these phrases that allow us to talk about things that didn't happen. So we're talking about looking back at our life and seeing what decisions and what actions we made. And in this case, uh, we have a great sentence here. If I hadn't studied architecture, I would have become an artist. All right. So let's look at the first part before the comma. If I hadn't studied architecture. So now we have the conditional if. So Marco, big question. Did he study architecture? He did. He did. So if I hadn't studied architecture, it means I did study architecture. But if I had not studied it, mm -hmm. okay, so this is if I could change the past, mm -hmm. then what would I have done? I would have become an artist. Okay, so he wanted to be an artist, but he didn't become an artist. He studied architecture instead. Right. Okay, Very so good. you can see the two parts here. We have one, the condition, if I hadn't done this thing. And then afterwards, we have the result. Then I would have become an artist. So this is the hypothetical. Very good. And when we see the condition, you see the gram the you see the the structure of the sentence is had plus verb in past participle. So if I hadn't studied architecture, and this is called the past perfect, mm -hmm. right? And then the the result, as you said, would have become. This is the present perfect. Have or has plus verb in past participle. Let's look at another example. I wouldn't have gotten married if I hadn't moved to this town. Okay, so we've got the same idea here, but we've got it flipped. We've got mm -hmm. these two parts in different places. And so uh, he's pretty much saying, if I hadn't moved to this town, then I wouldn't have gotten married. Mm -hmm. But what did happen? He did move to this town and he did get married. Exactly. So then, yeah, like you say, he changed the condition and you can do this. You can put the condition in the beginning or at the end. And again, this, the structure is the same. I would have gotten married, right? Have gotten. This is present perfect. Have or has, depending on the subject, plus the verb in past participle. And then the past perfect or the condition had plus verb in past participle, hadn't moved to this town, all right? That's a lot of grammar. It's a lot of grammar, but it's very it's very easy once you just start using it. Don't think too much about, okay, what do I do here? Just, you know, if you get the, the rhythm and you start using it in the same way, then it kind of comes out naturally. And if you make a little mistake, there's not a big deal, because even we do it, you know? Exactly. Well, let's try a couple of examples off the top of our heads. All First right. of all... Mm, if I hadn't moved to China, I wouldn't have learned Chinese. Very good. So you did move to China and you did learn Chinese. Exactly. So right. your turn. All right. Um, if my parents hadn't spoken Spanish to me when I was a kid, I wouldn't have become fluent in Spanish. Okay. So your parents did speak Spanish to you and you did become fluent did in become Spanish. Fluent, yes. So not bad. Right. As you can see, you can use it not only to, to think about things in the past that you can't change anymore, but just also, you know, kind of remember or say, you know, oh, if this hadn't happened, the result. Or if I hadn't opened my big mouth, my best friend wouldn't have gotten so angry at me. Exactly. So I said something stupid and my friend <laughs> did get angry and it, now I feel bad about it. It happens. All right, very good. So I hope it's clear. It does sound a little bit complicated, but 
this is what our website is for, right? So uh, if you have questions or doubts or you want to try and plant your own ideas, you can come to the website and do it. Want to make some of your own sentences and practice some of these new things, then come to our website, post some comments, and we are happy to correct and add our own commentary on those. Exactly. So before we go, let's listen to this dialogue one last time. This is the good life. We have it good, don't you think? Yeah, of course. Although, don't you ever wonder what could have been? What do you mean? Well, sometimes I think of how things could have turned out if I had done things a little differently. For example? Like, for example, if I hadn't studied architecture, I would have become an artist like I wanted to. I see. Yeah, now that I think of it, I wouldn't have gotten married if I hadn't moved to this town and met Sally. You see, everything happens for a reason. We wouldn't even have met if I hadn't been in that car accident ten years ago. Well, I have no regrets. I'll drink to that. All right, we're back. So, uh, Catherine, any other regrets maybe in your life apart from uh, opening your mouth? Any other regrets? If my parents had spoken Spanish to me as a kid, <laughs> I would have learned. But instead, I just learned English, and that's all. Well, your, mom, your mom is a half a Swedish, right? Half Swedish, half Czech. So, and she never spoke any of these languages to you? She, no, she didn't speak Swedish or Czech. Her parents spoke oh. English as their common language. Oh, really? But she grew up speaking Italian and German. Ah. But she didn't speak to me in those languages. And then as an adult, she forgot some of it, some, mm -hmm. some of them. And so... Um, because my dad was, my dad, well, they're both Americans now, but mm -hmm. my dad's American. Uh, they just spoke English to me. Wow. But now you speak Italian. So do you ever try and talk to your mom in Italian? <laughs> Sometimes. Um, my grandmother's Italian is much better. So I, ah. my grandmother's completely fluent. So I speak to her in Italian. Oh, wow. And, um, and German as well. She's fluent in German too. And I wow. studied German at school. So see, this is the interesting thing now. So many people are... Uh, speaking so many languages and before if you spoke another foreign language it was a big deal oh yeah but now it's like a requirement you have to at least uh, dominate your own native language and a foreign language right so if your native language is uh, English you at least have to speak Spanish or Chinese or some other language definitely true and I think there are a lot of people um, a lot of our users that speak maybe two or three languages, and English is just one more. So, <laughs> you know, more power to them. This yeah. is a really great skill to it's have, great. and I think it's really important to keep on going with it, even though it's frustrating sometimes. Right. And actually, once you've uh, been able... And actually, once you master uh, two or three different languages, then the fourth and fifth just becomes easier. Actually, it's true. It sounds... It sounds funny when you hear it because mm -hmm. you're like, how could it be easier to learn more? But your brain starts to understand patterns better, yeah. right? And so it just becomes more natural it for just you. It picks up patterns from the two or three other different languages that you dominate. So it just, it's a weird, it's strange how the you brain works. connections, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So uh, that's all for today. Be sure to visit our website, EnglishPod.com. As we said, any questions or comments or uh, you want us to correct your, uh, your grammar of this lesson, Uh, you can visit us there, and we'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> the English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. To think about. Wonder. A person who designs buildings. Architect To end up like Turn out To ruin or destroy something Like a car Wreck Used to express a realization Now that I think of it A feeling of guilt Remorse. To feel sad or sorry about something. Regret. To think deeply about something. Ponder. A happy and relaxed life. Good life. To think fondly about the past. 
reminisce. An alternative scenario could have been the art and science of designing buildings, architecture, a sudden event that is not planned, accident. Let's try that faster. A person who designs buildings. Architect. A feeling of guilt. Remorse. To end up like. Turn out. A happy and relaxed life. Good life. To feel sad or sorry about something. Regret. An alternative scenario. Could have been. The art and science of designing buildings. Architecture. To think about. Wonder. Used to express a realization. Now that I think of it, to ruin or destroy something, like a car. Wreck. To think deeply about something. Ponder. To think fondly about the past. Reminisce. A sudden event that is not planned. Accident. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Wonder. I wonder what Mike is doing in his room. I think he's building a time machine or something. Wonder. I wonder why Debbie kicked her husband out of the house. Wonder. We often wonder and ask ourselves why we continue to spend money on useless things. Turn out. Our house turned out beautifully. The architect is very talented. Turn out. I'm curious to see how everything will turn out in the next few days. Turn out. It turns out Bob was right. I really do have a drinking problem. Now that I think of it, actually, now that I think of it, I do have a lawnmower you could borrow. Now that I think of it, wait, now that I think of it, you owe me one hundred dollars. Now that I think of it, now that I think of it, I should have behaved better at the party. Regret. You can't live your life with regrets. Stay positive and optimistic. Regret. Do you have any regrets in life? Regret. I regret to inform you that your dog will never walk again. If I hadn't gone skiing, I wouldn't have broken my leg.
If Ellie had studied harder, she would have passed the exam. They wouldn't have missed their flight if they had left home earlier.